another bugbear word is theocracy. Say so you, you want theocracy. Well, what they usually mean is ecclesiocracy. They want to accuse us of wanting to shut, set up a Christian version of what they have in Iran, mm -hmm. where Ayatollah Weirdbeards are, are running the show and the church is in charge of the state. Uh, what do you think of the separation of church and state? This is where Kuiper's very helpful because he talks about spheres and there are overlap, there's overlap in spheres. We saw that operating in COVID, but there are distinct spheres. And in those spheres, there are distinct authorities. So God establishes authorities in the church, elders, and they are to govern the church. They're to shepherd God's people. That's a distinct sphere. They are not um, God's minister of the state. They're not um, the ones in view when Paul's writing in Romans 13. Uh, those are distinct authorities that he appoints, and there's a distinct sphere. Um, so the, the elders in the church don't bear the sword. Um, that's what belongs to the state. The state mm -hmm. bears that sword, has authority to wield that sword. And uh, in the church, you have the elders who have the authority of discipline. That's the way the power is wielded there. But those are two distinct things. So the, the fear of, well, what's really going to happen is you're going to have pastors. You know, you're going to have a pastor in the White House, um, which plays itself out in evangelical thought every time the cycle comes around. They say, well, I don't, uh, you have a lot of people that are willing to compromise on morality, which I, they're compromising on this idea that we're talking about because they say, well, I don't need my president to be my pastor. Mm -hmm. And well, yes and amen, but let's talk about what he does need to be. He does right. need to be one who is who fears, bowing, fears God, who fears yeah. God and acknowledges that he's a servant of Yahweh. So the three basic spheres would be the sphere of the family, the sphere of the church, and the sphere of uh, civil government. Mm -hmm. And you also have the government of your ham radio club and your chess club and your quilting circle, but those are all man-made governments. The, the governments among men that God established directly would be family, church, and state. So family, God established government of the family in the Garden of Eden when he presented the first woman to the first man. And then when Jesus teaches on divorce, he says that that paradigm, a man will leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife, He's, he's saying that that's a paradigm for all time, for all marriages. So that's the government of the family. And you've got the government of the church. Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, Ephesians 4, and gave gifts to men. He, he's the one who established the government of the church. And then you cited Romans 13. No authority exists except that which is established by God. So these are all th three God-given authorities that have their marching orders straight from God mm -hmm. and not from one another? Yeah, they, <clears throat> the marching orders are not. I, there is a place for the moral authority that the church is going to have and that the church needs to exercise even now. Um, so, so the pastors are not going to be uh, an authority over the state in the work that the state has to do. Right. That's a very clear, clear line. Where I think people are uncomfortable with, and I would just acknowledge, yes, that's the case, is that, well, the church is going to be, have this, there's going to be a moral uh, responsibility and authority of proclaiming truth. And that's going to be watched when it comes down to the practical decisions that need to be made. That's not going to be a place that the, the pastors are not going to go there. Uh, but if, if the state begins to say, well, you know, we think that we'll kill the children here, um, or we think that we'll bind people up in their homes without warrant, there ought to be a prophetic witness from that sphere of the church to say, kiss the sun, lest you perish. So these, these spheres are not operating in different rooms, having nothing to do with each other. There are areas of interaction and overlap. Yeah. There, uh, well, I remember years ago reading a book by Dave Hunt. I think, I think it was Dave Hunt who, who uh, argued that John the Baptist cut a promising ministry career short by, by <laughs> meddling in politics. <laughs> when, he, when he told uh, Herod that it was not lawful for him to have his brother's wife, uh, Dave Hunt said, well, he, sh he shouldn't have been, in, uh, yeah. he shouldn't, shouldn't have been messing with, 
shouldn't have been messing with a political issue, as though adultery is a political issue, <laughs> right? Uh, so there's interaction, there's communication be between the spheres, mm -hmm. right? Family communicates with the church, and the church with the family, and the family with the state, and the state with the family, and the church and the state. So we we believe that separation of church and state means recognition that the governments of those two institutions are distinct and separate. They have different jobs. But separation of church and state, or distinguishing church and state rather would be a better way, way of putting it, mm -hmm. is not the same thing as separating God and state, or separating Christ and state, or separating morality and state. Watch the full interview only on Canon Plus. If you haven't joined up yet, be sure to use the promo code MR99 to get your first month for just 99 cents. Just click the link below and sign up today.